Hi guys, it's the Macintosh Guide and I'm back again with a brand new video. Now today we're going to be looking at probably coming to the end of the 360 obsession. So we've got the Xbox 360 Jasper in white. We've got the Xbox 360 Elite, which was my favourite. And the Xbox 360 Slim, one of the most stable Xboxes out there for that generation. Now, as you guys could probably tell, I love, I have an unholy obsession with the 360. It was my favorite console. And what we're gonna do is just look at some of the differentiations between the three that are pretty obvious. So guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy this short video for my love for the 360. Now, as you guys probably know, a little bit of history, if you're around the two, mid 2000s and up until 2013, 14, until the, the eighth gen console came out, the 360 was part of the seventh generation and part of the big Xbox 360 versus PlayStation 3 battle. Now, everyone remembers that time slot, but no matter what console you use, the Mono Office 2 lobbies, everyone remembers those, before EA became greedy with their ultimate team packs and then starting to pretty much nerf everything. Um, and just the excitement and, and joy that we got from the, the graphics boost that we got in gaming, and also the capabilities of multiplayer, which, absolutely took a boost since we saw the seventh generation consoles enter the market i will do a video on the playstation 3 pretty soon i've got one coming and that's a video that you need to stay tuned for but today's focus is going to be the 360 and the differentiations between three models now back then there were various different xbox 360 models the one that we have is the Xbox 360, which was the 60 gigabyte model. Now this is where Microsoft changed quite a lot, especially the motherboard. So this Xbox 360, if I can bring it to the camera, uh, in a very, very chunky, chunky machine, as you can tell, it was manufactured in 2009, 22nd of April. So it's just over, if my maths is terribly bad, it's around 15 years old, this console, right here now as you can probably tell from the front the console is in this gorgeous white everyone loves the white console everyone one of these and microsoft did a really good job i think it's one of the most pleasing consoles out there in the market um we've got this beautiful white disc tray we had a sensor over here we had two memory card slots which is also weird we still got memory and memory card slots back then for the 360 you had a physical button for to turn the console on and then you had two USB-A ports at the back at the front sorry and this plate was absolutely removable as well you used to be able to do people Microsoft used to sell these face plates that you can change all the time it was brilliant and then you've got fence on the side you've got the gorgeous the logo right there and then you've also got the same on the other side now the hard drive itself was actually fully removable so if we move that out you can see it's an original one as well and then it was a simple matter of just slipping it back in and you're good to go so quite brilliant loved it and yeah quick and easy and if we have a look at the back because this console was absolutely heavy back then you can see the differentiation now the biggest way to know that this motherboard is a Zeph is a jasper motherboard is by looking at the pins and how they interlude and by looking at the power cord and also you could see the differentiation here. So it has the AV SCART port right here, which was, you know, very ancient after looking at it, a HDMI port, which was new in the just, just my motherboard scene, USB-A at the back, and they also had ethernet. I mainly use it with ethernet because it's more reliable and stable. And you used to get the Wi-Fi dongle as well, as I showed you in my previous video. They used to come with the 360. Now, as I said, Jasper is the most reliable version of the 360 and you're less likely to get red rings of death. It doesn't mean that you won't get them in for whenever, but they're more reliable certainly than the other Zephyr motherboards that you used to get. Now let's have a look at the Elite. So the 360 Elite came out in 2007 and this was, was pretty much promoted as the Elite Pro Gamer from back then. Now this came in a gorgeous black. This gave that feeling that this is a 360 that I want for my collection. And you can see it's a 
gorgeous, gorgeous black throughout the console. Um, so just again, you don't see too much of a difference in the console. If we look at the front, it has this gorgeous metal plating for the disc. You've got the sensor over here. You've got two USB, two memory card slots. You've got the button, which is still the same. And then you've also got the slot for your USB-A ports. And this one came with 120 gigs. I don't know if the light's gonna help, but it's a 120 gig drive. And then you can see from the back, this console was actually manufactured in 2009. So a couple of months after the one that we have, 25th, 26th on Boxing Day, this was manufactured. And as you can tell, again, the IO is very similar because it's a, it's a Jasper motherboard. You've got AV slot, you've got HDMI, you've got Ethernet, you've got USB-A. And again, the SCAR is the exact same as we have on the white 360. But this console just looks aesthetically pleasing. I'm very lucky that I've got one in very good condition. Um, and it is my favorite. The only issue I have is that whenever the disc spins, it makes too much more noise. Um, but I'm too afraid to open it up, unfortunately. Uh, but again, beautiful console. And I'm very, very happy about this one. I did a lot of gaming on this 360 when I had it back in the days. And I, uh, again, shared the most beautiful memories with it. I can just, I could swap the drives out between this and the white model anytime I want. But that's just a quick look at the Elite. And now we're gonna look at the revamped 360. And I, I actually really enjoyed this design when they did it. And I think it's the right way. It came in two variants. It came in a glossy and it came in a matte. I think the glossy, which I owned in a previous video, I actually had to give back to CEX and get my money back because it just was too problematic. It just wouldn't post and then too, too many issues. Now on here, this is the matte version. I've got a picture from eBay. It's a cheap model, it works absolutely fine, no issues. And as you can tell, it's way more simplified than before. So now you see it's touch everywhere. So touch to eject the disc. You've now just got a black matte disc drive. This is all touch. And then you've also got two USB-A. You now don't have the memory slots over here anymore, which is a very interesting choice. You've now got bigger vents on the side. Um, and overall, it's way, way more smaller. And you can see it's got like a two-tone type of difference. And now the IO at the back is very different compared to what um, the Elite and the Arcade and the, the Pro version had. Now on here, you can see that there we have way more USB-A slots at the back. We've got three more. You've got a AV port right here. You've got HDMI, you've got Ethernet, you've got AUX for some reason here. You've got SPDF, PDIF port, which is right here as well. And then you've got a different power brick a two-tone frog looking power brick, as I like to say it, as I like to see it. Now, when was this console manufactured? This was manufactured in 2012. So nearer to the end of the console's lifespan, this one was manufactured. Now, this is the most reliable one out of all of the consoles to own. You're less likely to have issues and you will certainly have a good experience with it. It is somewhat loud, but I would say it's manageable. Um, so if you're going to be doing streaming and stuff like that, I, I would suggest having either an Elite or having the Slim as your choices. But again, the White 360 is still a good preference as well, as long as you've got the Jasper motherboard. Now that's not the only thing we're going to be looking at on the consoles. We will also be looking at the controllers that came with it. So, as you can tell, I've only got two controllers right here in front of me. I've got one which is a white one. And I've got which is the black one. Now we're going to have a look at the white one first. So as you can tell, this was the iconic 360 controller. It is absolutely perfect. I still like to plug this into my PC whenever I want to do PC gaming and still use this. It has this wonderful white and grey design right here. Um, I don't actually have a microphone anymore for the 360, but you can tell back in the days you had to use a custom Microsoft port to be able to connect your controller via, via wired to your console, but Again, iconic. You had your RT and L, you had your LB and RBs, you had your left trigger, right trigger, which I really love that they just named it so simple. You had the start button, your back button right here, you had your the Xbox logo that you click and it'll start generating a light. You had your left analog stick, your right analog stick, and you also had your your up and down and left and rights. And the iconic color, I really love this. Now the AEX, Y and B were coloured in this instance and I, I still think it's the best thing. This is the best controller that 
has ever been released by Microsoft. Um, and I think the next one, next best one, is probably the PlayStation 5 controller, in my honest opinion. Microsoft went downhill with their controllers after the Xbox One came out. But this came with my white Xbox 360 right here. Um, and it's still usable. I've got two white ones. Um, and yeah, I will certainly, certainly love playing some retro games with. And it's funny to say retro, but 7th Gen is now retro, in my honest opinion, um, with my friends whenever they come down. And the next controller we're obviously going to be looking at is the black one. So not much of a difference. It's just a color differentiation. Again, they're both wireless controllers as well. But as you can tell, it's got a nice little black design. Again, I don't really like this one as much. Um, it still feels the same. There's no difference in that. Um, but I just feel like that the white one was just so much better if I'm looking at it. But it's just much like these controllers from that 360 generation. Just so beautiful. Just so beautiful beautiful and wonderful to hold. Microsoft did a really good job. But again, control is really good. And obviously you get a battery pack, you, you can shove your batteries in there and play, use the controller wirelessly. Um, and yeah, so lovely controllers by Microsoft. So the other thing I wanted to show you was the differentiation in the power brake. So this is the power brake that you get with the Elite and the, the standard white Xbox 360. And then this is the power brake that you get with the Xbox 360 Slim. So as you can tell, it's a bit slimmer, but I wouldn't say that it's any more lighter. It's still pretty much identical. Now, the differentiation between both of them are, is, you know, there's a ventilation system of two cuts over here, two cuts over here, but then there's nothing on the bottom. Um, uh, this was all. This, this does get hot. I wouldn't say it gets substantially hot, but it does obviously get hot. It's just obviously powering your Xbox 360. Um, but yeah, this was a massive chunky break that came with your console. Now, you look at the Xbox 360 one, 360 Slim one, much lighter, again, full vent system, nothing on the bottom. Um, and it, it much more lighter to carry around, but still a break. It's still very big to, to put in your bag and then, you know, it's not really portable, portable, I would say. But yeah, that's the batteries. So guys, this video was more of a differentiation between the three consoles now, between the standard Xbox 360 and the Elite. Not much as they both have the same motherboard running, so the components would be the same in, in all aspects. Just kill a color differentiation and a bigger hard drive here. Now the Slim is where things change because obviously it's, a, it's an entire design change. Um, and, and that's obviously where we saw most of the differences. If you had to buy a 360, I would, you know, you could choose any of them. This is obviously Jasper, both of these. This, these two will be more reliable, but in my honest opinion, it's probably better for you to pick up a slim model compared to the other two. Now for aesthetic pleasing reasons, the Elite's the way to go. Like this is obviously the best looking console. I think the color goes really well. Um, and overall, you're, you're, you're gonna love it if you wanna just collect it and just keep it as your museum piece. You can, 360, Elite, best looking console out there. But my personal, personal preference is either this or this. I love the white color. I think this is iconic. This shows back in the 2005s when we used to pick one up. Be like, this is the Xbox 360 Elite. People would go crazy for these. Um, but yeah, guys, this is the 360 comparison. I'm not gonna show you a video of that three of them being booted up. You know, there's no differentiation. All got the same dashboard. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's no point of doing that. But, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick comparison video. Like and subscribe. And we know we're now on 1,350 subscribers. That's iconic. I started this channel back in December 2022. It's just as a little fun hobby. And we've grown so much. So I just want to say thank you to all of you guys. It's real pleasure. This isn't my, my full-time thing. But... I just love tech and this is, I just want to be able to show it to you guys. I've also got a very exciting video coming up midweek as we've got a couple of new Apple items that have just been released that I will be picking up and doing a quick video on. So like and subscribe guys again. Love you all. Thank you for the support and I shall see you in the next one.